spots, and beasts, beguiling unstable souls. That's the title of this next message. We're going to read first from 2 Peter chapter 2, starting at verse 19 to the end. While they promised them liberty, they themselves are the servants of corruption. For of whom a man is overcome, of the same is the man brought in bondage. For if, after they have escaped the pollutions of the world, through the knowledge of the Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ, they are again entangled therein and overcome. The latter end is worse with them than the beginning. For it had been better for them not to have known the way of righteousness than after they have known it to turn from the holy commandment delivered unto them. But it has happened unto them according to the true proverb, the dog is turned to his own vomit again. And the sow that was washed to her wallowing in the mire. You know, that's kind of sad. You get a pig all spruced up and prettied up, pretty little, put a little bow on his neck, and what's that pig going to do all clean and fresh? He's going to run to that mud and wallow in it all over again. And a dog, when he gets sick and he vomits up whatever made him sick, guess what he's going to do? He's going to go back to that floor, and he's going to lick that crap right back up. And that's the way God describes those who turn away from him after having tasted that he is good, after having committed themselves to the Lord and lived a life of righteousness. How many of you have gotten caught up in relationships that took you so far out there you would know Jesus if he slapped you in the face? How many of you have gotten so caught up with a man and, and his alluring sexual enticements that you could no longer close your legs because all of a sudden there's another power ruling over you rather than the power of the Holy Spirit enabling you to live a righteous life. But now that that has come to an end, oh, you're living a life all right under the sheets Hmm. <laughs> giving it all up to flesh and blood who can't save your soul, who can't deliver you from evil, and probably who won't even marry you because the sex is so good and the man is so fine or that woman is so, is so live, so stacked like a brick house that you just can't leave those boobs alone. You just can't stay out of that bed. That woman just turns your head. Got your nose open and your zipper. But you give God, Jesus, the Holy Spirit, his righteousness, his holiness, his revelations, the life he gives, the love he gives to you. You give that up for a little piece of tail. Imagine how that makes God feel. You have become a spiritual adulterer because it's not something that you're struggling with. You're enjoying this so much that you've just basically given up on God. You've given up on the things of God. Church? What church? No, you don't go to church. You can't hang with the saints. Because you got some, some, you know, you got a little something, something you got to take care of, don't you? Yeah, that thing that's got you uh, by the nose, dragging you around, whatever it wants you to do. Oh, yeah, baby. Yeah, we getting ready to get it on. While God is steadily calling to you, 
steadily crying out to you. I have a work for you. I have an anointing for you. I have called you to preach the gospel. I have called you to minister to inmates, to minister to children. I mean, whatever your calling is, baby, you are taking the toilet paper, wiping that away and flushing it down the toilet. And you have opened yourself up for a demonic stronghold that who knows if you will ever be able to break free from. Because once you've gone too far, you cross that line. There's a line that goes beyond God's mercy. And when you cross that line, what God does at that point, he turns you over to a reprobate mind. Trust me when I say you don't want that because the end, your condition at the end is so much worse. There's a scripture in the New Testament that talks about once a house has been swept and garnished and it's been clean, consider yourself the house. It's been swept and garnished. That person's given their heart to the Lord. Okay, and it's all clean now. All the goop has gone away. And then, here comes the devil calling his cohorts. He tries to get in, but he's not strong enough to get in because that Holy Spirit is powerful. But now he's going to allure you with the temptations that will draw you away through your own lusts. And when he knows he's got your attention, oh boy, yeah, here comes his cavalry. They're going to come in and they're going to take over your house again. And next thing you know, you are out of control. You have yielded. It tasted good to you. And mm, now you in the mood, baby, and you can't get out of the mood. And you got to have it. And here's the sad part. The devil has called in seven others stronger than himself. And your condition is seven times worse. I tell you, it's a dangerous position to be on the wrong side of that track. To be on the wrong side of that line. When you draw that that line, God draws the line. And you take a chance and you play Russian roulette with your soul. Oh, I'm scared for you. Because once God turns you over to a reprobate mind, you won't even feel sorry about what you've done. You won't feel the ability to repent. You won't be able to even care enough to seek God's face. You'll be like, hey, whatever. Your heart will grow cold. You won't want to be around the saints when they come around. You roll your eyes. Oh, baby, that is sure enough a backslidden condition. Please don't go there. Please don't go there. I'm pleading with you on that. Because there is a line when God actually says, my spirit will not always strive with you. And if he turns you over, you better hope and pray somebody out there is praying for you to turn God's heart back to you to try to lure you back into the kingdom. Because if nobody's praying and you're not trying, it may be over. It may be all over for you. And then matters get worse because, see, when the demons get in there and they titillate your flesh and they make you feel good and they give you something fine as wine in the summertime. And, ooh, baby, it's good to me. Do it to me again. And they do it to you again and again And again, every position you can think of, every imagination, you're like, oh. And the next thing you know, either somebody gets a disease 
or somebody's pregnant or somebody's busting you upside the head. Like, wait a minute, this ain't the way we started. Well, see, Satan gets you locked in. And then he has his way with you. Now, he, he ain't trying to make you have any fun. The fun part is to make you buy the whole lie, hook, line, and sinker. And when you buy into the lie, oh, man, he, he can have his way with you. You his little you his little piece of nothing. Now, he can toy with you and play with you and jerk you around all he wants because you have given him legal, legal right. Better call on the Lord while he may be found. Trust me on that. Call on the Lord while he may be found. Please. Because once he turns you over to that reprobate mind, and if perchance there's nobody praying for you on top of it, I would say a particular term, but it's not godly. I will say it this way. Your A-S-S -S is G-R-A-S-S. -S. Permanently. Throughout eternity. And here's the sad part. When you die, you can't get away from it. Because then the devil can just torture you, torment you. You don't want that. I'm telling you. It feels good now. It looks good. It smells good. But baby, there is a stinger at the end of that tail. You draw that thing close enough and before you know it, you've gotten bitten by something really deadly. Please take heed to the warning. Pray now. Pray now while he can still be found. Pray to Pray to God, please, in the name of Jesus, please don't, don't voluntarily be lost.